What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Geek Red In Depth. I'm your host, Angelo. And on today's show, I have a good friend, my man, Seth Simmons, coming through, part of the Monero and DCR community. Seth, how you been? Hey, man. Thanks for having me on. I've been been doing well. I'm uh, excited to chat all things privacy today. I know we've had a bit of a rough time getting this scheduled and set up, but thanks for thanks for your flexibility on that. Yeah, of course. Always. So let's get into your background and, and your intro into the CC space. Yeah, sure. So I'm um, sure I have a pretty normal intro story. Uh, got in end of 2017, just looking for pure speculation that I could make some money um, on Bitcoin and dove into that with some coworkers. Um, and uh, once I got into it and kind of got money money involved, I wanted to learn more about what I was actually buying. Um, and it, it kind of pushed me down the, the rabbit hole in general. Um, I definitely spent a few months after that kind of listening to everybody's white papers and seeing that they thought they had the, the next best thing, um, but quickly learned that there's a lot of stuff in the space that's just vaporware um, and dove back into, into Bitcoin. Um, and then in mid-2018, I just got interested in, in mining in general. And at that point, Monero was the best thing to mine with uh, just regular commodity hardware. So built some GPU mining rigs and um, that again made me interested in what actually Monero was and why why did people care about it enough to make it valuable to mine and um, what did it actually do differently than Bitcoin that kind of thing um, and at that same time I kind of fell down the privacy rabbit hole outside of the cryptocurrency space um, just learning more about um, what nation states are doing to try to erode privacy to increase their own power what companies are doing to try to exploit user data um, and so I just got more interested in, in privacy in general then. And then in about mid-2019, um, a person in the Monero community who um, was helpful and informative um, kind of started talking a little bit to me about Decred and specifically the security assurances that Decred brings caught my eye. Um, just reading some of the, the articles that people had um, written in the Decred community on how the dual proof of work, proof of stake um, security actually function in, in Decred, what that meant on a, on a dollar scale, just seeing the, the raw security that that brought in comparison to just a pure proof of work or proof, pure proof of stake network, um, really got me interested in, in why can this small chain survive and do so well um, compared to small chains that are purely proof of work, having issues with reorgs and double spins and all of these things. And yet Decred has no hard forks. It's never had a double spin, never had a reorg, um, a deep reorg, that kind of thing. So. That's kind of how I got into the space, for sure. Understood. Now, with everything that's going on in the world in regards to COVID, uh, how do you see the macro environment affecting the cryptocurrency space moving forward? Yeah, um, I think, to be honest, at the beginning of all this COVID craziness, I definitely was very bearish on both legacy assets like stock um, and cryptocurrency. Just thought that the economic impact of this was going to bring us all way down um, and cause a lot of issues and underestimated what the Fed stimulus um, could actually do to, to hold up these markets. So we've definitely continued to be in a bull market um, that we were in even before that. So um, I think that that will continue. I think that that just pure speculation side is definitely still going strong. Um, news of more stimulus on the way. I think that will continue probably past the elections as well. Um, but I think that there's also two really important things that cryptocurrency brings that stocks and other just pure investment assets don't. Um, and I think that that's both a hedge against inflation and specifically hyperinflation or um, uh, just the money supply being inflated away so that your dollars become practically worthless. Um, and they can also help us to have a tool to use against the war on cash and the surveillance state, two things that are kind of going on in tandem in um, the Western world, well, really all over the world at this point. Um, and I think assets like Bitcoin, Decred, and Monero that have known or like a, a finite amount of, of inflation or just predictable inflation like Monero can provide a very strong hedge against that um, because you know that no one's just going to wake up one day and and print 20 million more Decred. It can't happen no matter how, how much people want that. It can't happen unless the whole entire community agreed on something like that. Um, and then to fight back against the warrant privacy, uh, these assets can implement things like Decred has implemented um, Coin Shuffle Plus Plus, like Monero has built out the Monero protocol to give users strong default privacy guarantees. So I think that 
these assets can both be a store of value and something that can help us to fight the war on privacy. Seth, being such a privacy advocate, uh, what are your thoughts on the progress of the space since you since you first were a part of it? Yeah, I think um, I think there's definitely been strong progress in some key areas. Um, I think overall I've been a little bit disappointed because I think a lot of projects have tried to just use privacy as a buzzword. Um, instead of really trying to push things forward, they're just kind of trying to jump on the bandwagon. So I think there definitely has been as much progress as I'd like, um, but there are definitely some some core groups and projects pushing it forward. Um, I think we've seen in Bitcoin, the early ossification of the base layer has really kind of tied developers' hands there for building out privacy tools in some ways, but we've seen people like uh, Samurai Wallet continue to push forward and build some some really strong tools for both CoinJoin specifically and for post-mix tools um, that can still give users some pretty strong measure of privacy um, on the base layer, which is, is definitely cool to see. And they definitely have to fight through a lot because of the uh, the lack of features on the base layer, but glad that they're still pushing there. Um, and I think Decred has so far done a very good job with their coin join implementation, which is called Coin Shuffle Plus Plus specifically. But um, I think the best decision that they've made so far is making that easy to integrate in with solo staking. Um, so since the moment uh, CSPP launch for Decred, I've been solo staking and mixing, and it's been um, it's been just honestly very easy. I mean, it is all CLI right now. I think it's coming to Decredit on the GUI wallet with this upcoming 1.6 release. But um, yeah, so that'll, that'll definitely be exciting too, because that'll get even more people involved. But um, seeing the adoption at this point when it's CLI only has also been great to see. Already far more than any kind of Bitcoin coin join um, implementations at the moment. So I think that was a really good idea. It, it really incentivizes adoption. Uh, it is still opt-in, so people still have to choose to uh, mix at the moment. But I think also that's going to change with the GUI release and that it's going to be um, automatically selected to mix all of your funds. Correct. Outside what you've already seen implemented inside the DCR privacy, uh, what is something that you think it's missing or the chain would benefit from? Yeah, I think as Decred continues to grow, um, it'll be important to have these either mixing protocols or stronger things like um, confidential amounts or uh, default mixing built into the protocol itself. Um, you can definitely do opt-in right now because there's only one wallet. I mean, there's only the official Decred wallet, the official Decred CLI wallet. So it's easy to put the features in that and not have to make any changes to the protocol. Um, but as you see adoption of Decred grow, hopefully, um, you'll see other implementations come online. And if it's not a default for the protocol itself, these other wallets and other tools could uh, just ignore or they could misimplement mixing, that kind of thing. Um, so I would love to see very strong opt-out privacy solutions in the base layer rather than opt-in. Um, one of the kind of bare minimums is to get confidential amounts baked into the base layer, which essentially hides the amounts that people are transacting. Um, and I think a lot of people have auditability concerns with that, but auditability in cryptocurrencies is already kind of tricky, and I don't think we should use this. I can just whip out a calculator and calculate how many decred there are as like the golden standard of auditability. And I think that having strong base layer privacy is well worth the trade-off of trusting sound cryptography and sound implementations. And I think that Decred has shown that they're very good at code, they're very good at design, they're very good at documentation. So building in something like that to the base layer, I, I wouldn't be too concerned about the actual implementation itself. So I'd love to see something like that, either similar tools like Monero has on the base layer or some kind of like ZK Stark solution that would still be trustless um, that has yet to be developed. Understood. Uh, what makes privacy an important aspect of Decred? to focus on for you? Yeah, I think uh, the key for me is I'm I'm a big fan of the method of exchange portion of cryptocurrencies, like that specific use case. I think store value is very valuable um, and it's something that is helpful to have, but I think there are a lot of, there are already a lot of asset classes that people can get involved in. And with kind of the regulatory crackdown on non-KYC exchanges and that kind of thing, 
it's not necessarily going to be easier to get into cryptocurrency than legacy finance. Um, so for me, method of exchange is a very big focus because we need a tool that lets us still transact like we have cash, but at a digital level. Um, and so strong privacy not only just helps with Decred as a base money by giving it fungibility. So fungibility is just this idea that any one Decred can be exchanged for any other Decred and they are exactly the same. You can't tell them apart. You can't tell a history, anything like that. Um, and then also to use it as a method of exchange, you need strong privacy. Um, you need to be able to hand somebody like you can hand somebody cash and trust that they can't track where you got the money, what you've used the money for. You need to be able to send somebody Decred and be able to trust that they're not peeking into your wallet, seeing everything you've done, that kind of thing. Um, so I think that's definitely something that's going to be key for Decred to, to finish up. All right, Seth. Now, comparing DCR Monero, what are some of the things you think the projects do well? And what are some of the things you think the projects do poorly? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I really like just talking about some of the negatives of these projects. I think that's something that Monero has done a lot of, which is one of the things that's kind of drawn me in. Um, so definitely like talking about this. I think for Decred, um, the things that it does well for me, I talked about this a little bit earlier as to kind of why I got into Decred, but uh, one of the top ones is honestly just the, the approach to security, how Decred has balanced proof of work to make sure that issuance doesn't all go to a a small set of, of stakers. Um, so most of the issuance is going to proof of work and then proof of stake to validate what the proof of work miners are doing and to allow governance. Um, and along with that, just the very strong governance tools when you have Politea um, and just allowing each user, as long as they have one ticket or with ticket splitting to be able to vote on how the protocol actually iterates over time, how the funds from the treasury are used. Um, it's a very powerful control over the protocol by theoretically the people obviously with um depending on how the actual funds are distributed who has vote control that kind of thing but definitely gives a lot of opportunity for people to control the the future of decred um and outside of that i think the ux across decred's products is just incredible probably the best in the space i think um using decrediton the gui wallet using politea anything that you touch you can tell that it's been well engineered it's well documented and is really easy for everybody to use. Um, and I think what Decred does poorly, I think the biggest one for me so far is, I think that Decred, the community at least, has bought into this idea of store of value as like the, the ideal meme to drive Decred forward and the ideal meme to get people in. And I think as part of that, we've missed out on gaining merchant adoption or adoption on the, on the streets, as the guys at Samurai Wallet like to say. Um, I think that's something I'd definitely like to see improve. I think getting integrated into BTC, BTC pay server or forking BTC pay server to be like a DCR pay server or something would be a good step forward. I have a, I have yeah. a rebuttal for that. Yeah. So, so I'm part of that camp that uh, thinks that when it comes to, when it comes to crypto, it's, it's main use case is going to be money. And if you have a scarce digital asset, why would you want to spend that? It seems more like it's use cases for saving versus, you know, other digital assets that you can print, you know, an infinite amount of. Say that's why you have stable coins for. Yeah, I definitely think, I mean, if you have a deflationary asset like Decred is, I mean, it, it clones a lot of the same um, monetary policy from Bitcoin. I think it does the actual changes in block reward much smoother and simpler, but clones a lot of the same and that has a 21 million cap, it will be long-term deflationary. And so definitely long-term, you won't want to spend it. I, I don't think that argument is true short-term, especially not right now with just how Decred price has done over the past few years. I don't think you can really say that the deflationary aspect of Decred drives people to hold at the moment. But if obviously if this takes off and it's still around in 50 or 60 years, yeah, that'll definitely be an important play. Um, but in the meantime, I think method of exchange is very important up front. And I think that's also, I'll just call this out while we're here. I think that's also one thing that I like about Monero is that they have the tail emission that's constantly um, putting out a very small amount of inflation that is asymptotically approaching 0%. So there's always some inflation going into the, the market 
so that there's an incentive to spend in some way, but it's also still known inflation and it's very low. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and then I think uh, a couple other things that I've kind of struggled with in, in Decred, I think one is, and I th uh, the Rough Consensus podcast just had, I think Chris Dannon was his name on, hopefully I've got that right, but he gave some very good critical feedback on um, how Decred can differentiate itself from Bitcoin and just kind of how Decred needs to sell itself or how it shouldn't sell itself. Um, as I'll definitely, have, I'd point people to go listen to that. I think he had some really good critiques there. I think it's a it's a tricky part with Decred because I think a lot of times it gets pitched as like Bitcoin, but better. And just due to network effects, if you're just a, a better Bitcoin, you're not really going to gain adoption, I don't think. So, and I, I've struggled with this. I don't know how to better pitch Decred. Um, that's something I've been trying to think of and, and come up with a better answer for that. I, I haven't come up with one. So I think that's been a, a tricky part so far with Decred. I mean, I mean, to be quite honest, the project is just not scammy enough. If you want my honest take, you know. Yeah, we don't we don't have anything in the background manipulating price. Um, there's other projects that have market makers in the background, and people just have an incentive to uh, blow out other traders. So the space is just full of that, and Decred doesn't breed any of that. So I think it suffers from it at the same time. But as far as fundamentals, it's it's one of the best projects in the space. But what is that worth if you're investing money into it and the price doesn't move? Yeah, and that's the hard part is trying to figure out like, do the fundamentals make a big enough difference that we can just keep pushing along as this is similar to Bitcoin but better in I think basically every way. I mean, there's not really a way I would say Bitcoin is better other than network effects on liquidity. But is that enough to to garner a market share? We've seen a lot of other coins fail to do that just by being a, like Bitcoin 2.0. So it's definitely something the community as a whole I think needs to keep driving and iterating, trying to figure out what what makes decred worth people putting money into and not just putting money into but actually getting involved in the community building products on top of it um there's a lot that definitely has to go into that so that's tricky and that's tricky for all projects that aren't bitcoin i mean this is a conversation every project should be having monero everybody how do you actually overcome that network effect or liquidity or how do you piggyback onto the network effect and liquidity of bitcoin correct yeah i think you're i think i think the pain that you feel if you made a poor investment is just related to your exposure. So if you find a project that you think is, you think has value, you just have to know how to measure your exposure. That way the price doesn't really matter. You know, as long as you have some exposure to the project because you're interested in it, you know, but if you overexpose yourself, then you start to complain about the market price, you know? Yep, and I have definitely been there. I've been that guy who, every time it dips, you, you know, you, you go, you buy the dip, you're like, oh, surely this is the last one. I'm gonna buy in, put in all my cash on the side, this is going to be it. And then it just keeps, keeps dipping, keeps dipping. And it's, it's hard to stay psychologically steady throughout that, as you see a market just keep dipping for a very long time. Um, yeah, that's tricky. I guess I'll, I'll pivot into Monero, what it does well and what it does poorly too. Um, I think for what it does well, I mean, the clear one that I think almost everyone would agree on in cryptocurrency space is the privacy of Monero is pretty much top notch. It has great privacy by default. So anyone interacting with Monero is getting strong privacy guarantees. Um, so it can act as, to me, I think one of the strongest pitches of Monero is digital cash. It's a way to still be able to transact privately peer to peer without having to use something physically. So you can do it digitally and then without having to have a trusted third party. So that privacy is definitely core to that. Um, and another thing I think it does well is it very critically researches its own flaws. So I think very much within the Monero community, and not everybody, but I think a strong part of the community is very focused on like, we don't want to tell you that Monero is perfect. We want to figure out where are the holes and how do we fix them? How do we keep iterating to improve those? Um, and I think the Monero community's willingness to hard fork and upgrade has been really key for that. And I think that that same ethos is is present in Decred. I think it could be stronger. Um, and I think sometimes it can be tricky to discuss issues, um, at least in like the matrix chat, things can get a little hairy in there. Um, but I think if if Decred can stay focused and keep figuring out where there are issues and where they need to grow, the, government's, the governance tools within Decred um, can really help to drive that forward and make hard forks easier and make small changes over time easier. Um, and I think the last thing for Monero is just that 
they're very focused on making sure that we do everything we possibly can to not allow users to shoot themselves in the foot. So a lot of privacy projects like Zcash and others have made things optional, and then they have like best practices that you need to follow. And honestly, users generally are not going to follow those best practices. They're probably not going to transact privately properly. So a lot of the concern that's gone into the Monero protocol is baking things in by default. So users just using the protocol in any way will get strong privacy guarantees. Not perfect privacy guarantees, but strong privacy guarantees that cover most, uh, most places uh, or most people's use cases. Well, perfect. That leads into my next question, you know, opt in versus opt out. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, this is, man, this is a tricky one. This is one that has kind of been a fight back and forth across the space for a lot of different projects. Um, I definitely, I see the merit in opt in. Obviously, Decred has gone this way so far. Um, and that basically just means that if you want to use the privacy tools within Decred, the same is true of Bitcoin, the same is true of Zcash, of a lot of other um, projects then you can but you have to do something extra you have to take an extra step on top of the normal use of the currency to gain those privacy guarantees which it's great that that is still allowed um and if you're just doing an opt-in it's much easier to implement because you can normally just do it at the app level or via soft fork but normally just at the app level and you don't have to actually make core changes to the protocol and we've seen this with Decred's uh, Coin Shuffle Plus Plus. It didn't require, I don't think it required any protocol changes um, because it's a coordinated mixing service. Or not service, that's probably a bad word, but coordinated mixing application. Um, so it is definitely good that it's easier to implement. That makes it possible for chains like Bitcoin to have opt-in privacy through wallets like Samurai Wallet. Um, but the main problem you have with opt-in privacy is really two main problems. One is you can just struggle to get adoption or liquidity, especially within mixing, liquidity is important. Um, and that's just because obviously people have to choose to use it. It's not just by default. So I can use Decred without ever touching the privacy tools if I want to. Um, and then the other main problem that you run into is usually when privacy is opt-in, there are a lot of ways for users to use it incorrectly and to, to hurt themselves and to hurt others' privacy at the same time. Um, this is possible to be worked around. Um, again, it would be at the app level. So if you're using the right software on top of the chain, you can work around a lot of this. Um, but this is really where your Decred Aton and the, the Decred CLI wallet will need to make sure that it covers as much of the potential kind of foot guns that users could have by default to try to take that away from them if the protocol is not going to do it. Um, so yeah, that's opt-in. It's definitely, there's a lot that's going on there. And most projects, I mean, really outside of Monero, there are very few projects that have chosen to do protocol-wide opt-out privacy. Um, so for opt-out privacy, it is definitely harder to implement. It normally requires protocol upgrades to the, the core consensus protocol, which means hard fork upgrades. And hard forks have always been contentious in the space. Um, obviously with Bitcoin, they're the most contentious, but a lot of people don't like that. It can lead to bad user experience because when you have a hard fork like Monero is about to have um, in, I guess, 10 days now, on the 17th, when you have that hard fork, anyone's running old software, they will no longer be on the right chain and they won't be able to, to manage their Monero to interact with the chain at all. They'll have to upgrade to do that. So it definitely can lead to some user experience issues as you can consistently iterate the protocol overall. Um, but the, the big pros with that are you get immediate 100% adoption by everyone who's using the system. So as soon as you turn on that new feature, you turn on privacy, everyone within the system, if they want to interact with it, they are going to get that privacy and they're going to be part of the liquidity and part of the anonymity set. So you get much better adoption that way. Um, and then also obviously the other one that I've talked about is you it, it gives you ways at the protocol level to take away ways that users can hurt their own their own privacy. And it doesn't matter which wallet or which software you're interacting with the chain with, you'll always get those because the only way to interact with the protocol is to follow those rules. Understood. Now, Seth, what are some of the ways that you see governance and privacy intersecting? Yeah, I think uh, just like I was talking about with opt-out, how it requires these frequent network upgrades and frequent hard forks. Governance, especially like we see in Decred with how hard forks are handled, um, makes that process much easier, much more pain-free, 
and much clearer. One of the problems with any kind of rough consensus like is used in Monero, like is used in Bitcoin, a lot of other um, projects is it basically relies on feeling out the community, making sure that there's not serious uh, voices against the overall change. And then if you're pretty sure that it's safe, you move forward and you make the change, you hard fork, and hopefully everyone goes along with the new chain. Um, for most projects outside of Bitcoin, that's never been a problem. Like there's never really been a contentious hard fork within Monero. Um, there's been a couple like scam projects that tried to take advantage of a hard port to get people to to buy into their network, but there hasn't really been any contentious hard forks. But um, with the way it, Decred handles hard forks, it's much simpler to integrate these big network breaking changes because you have very clear signaling way ahead of time. You have um, a much easier way to voice opinions for users and for miners. Um, and so it really helps to be able to bring those privacy tools to the protocol itself. And especially because privacy is not this thing where you suddenly achieve it. Like you don't just suddenly say, okay, we turn this on, the chain is now private, we never need to worry about that again. It is always an arms race. And so you're always going to have to be iterating the privacy tools to patch this threat, this threat vector, that threat vector, and keep iterating. So strong governance like in Decred really helps to make that simpler, cleaner, and uh, just a better user experience for everyone on the network. Hmm. Understood. What are your thoughts on uh, built-in funding versus say crowdforce, crowdsource or donation-based funding? Yeah, this is this is a tricky one. This is one I've been trying to kind of wrestle with, and I kind of want to write some, just some blog posts about it. It's very much, uh, very much an ethos thing. So a lot of projects are either very for this, uh, this idea of funding the project or funding developers directly from the block reward, and then other projects are very against that idea and very much for all block rewards going to proof of work miners or to validators, and then from there, somehow the devs get funded. Um, obviously, with Decred, a uh, portion of the block reward goes into the treasury, which soon will be properly decentralized, and so users will be able to, to properly vote and then see those funds sent dynamically rather than someone having control over the treasury funds and sending them, which is definitely going to be a big step forward. Um, and it, does, it takes the conscious burden off of users to do that because the users who have skin in the game and want to vote are able to control the funds from every block that's ever been emitted, um, which I think definitely has has a powerful potential there. Um, and like we see in Decred, it's controlled via Politea. So people have to actually have some skin in the game to vote and control those funds. Um, it also allows much easier, if funds are handled well, it, it makes it much easier to kind of sustain through bull and bear cycles because you have this constant emission no matter what's going on in the, the macro environment. It's it's happening every block no matter what. Um, and then I think when it's fully decentralized, like, like it will be in Decred, it allows contractors and people who want to work for Decred to be much more stable in their income, um, an issue you see in donation-based funding is that sometimes people just don't want to fund anything or they don't want to fund that specifically for some reason. So you, you kind of have to live on this cycle of, okay, I got funding for this period of time. Will I get it next time? But if it's coming out of a treasury, it's much more stable and predictable, which I think can help to draw more people to the project. Um, and then donation-based funding. And so just for anyone who doesn't know, this is the approach that's used in Monero. This is kind of the approach that's used in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's weird because you have companies like Chaincode and um, and others that are funding devs themselves as part of their company. So Bitcoin gets a little bit weird, but Monero does this where there's a, a community system where you can go, you can comment on proposals that are made for funding. And then once they get to a certain point, people can donate to them. And the proposal will only pass if enough donations are made. And if they are, then it moves forward. The person gets the money and you move on. Um, I think a lot of people in the Monero community are very focused on donation-based funding as the only path forward because they think that a block reward to treasury path removes some of the decentralization overall um, and that it can cause some gaming of the system. Um, but I don't, I don't know if I generally feel like that. I think that if you can do the block rewards, the block reward to treasury system in a way that's decentralized, it can really be a powerful thing um, and allows 
users to not have to worry about it if they don't want to, and they're still going to be essentially donating. I mean, if 10% of the block awards go to the treasury, everyone's getting taxed 10% in a, in a sense. It's a little more nuanced than that. But um, And then the other issue, like I mentioned before, with donation-based funding is during bear markets, people are going to be a lot less likely to part with their Monero or whatever. So you can have a lot of problems funding, especially large projects. Like if there's a big audit needed or some important employee or team needs to get funding during that period, it can be tricky. So there are definitely pros and cons of both. Um, and uh, I definitely want to learn more about this and hear people's thoughts on this for sure, because it's a it's an interesting back and forth, I think. Uh, what are some of the key differences between the communities, between XMR and DCR? Yeah, I think um, the Decred community has had this very strong focus on governance from the very beginning. Um, I still think it's crazy that Decred has had this split proof of work, proof of stake security system and some form of governance over it since basically launch. I mean, I know Politea is more recent, but um, it's pretty crazy how advanced I feel like Decred is and has been for a long time and has really kind of gone unnoticed. Um, but I think that that focus on strong governance has, in theory, given Decred the tools that it needs to to iterate and grow as the technology grows, as the focus of the project changes or shifts, and really helps to um, enable a lot because people are willing to voice their opinions. They're willing to get on Politea and leave comments. They're willing to go in and actually vote for things. So I think I think we've seen some very strong um, participation in voting too compared to other communities. So I think that's definitely been a, a focus there. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, I think user experience has been a, a big focus for the developers behind Decred. And I think that's great because it enables people of all skill sets to um, just to use the project simply. And that's honestly not something that a lot of projects can say. That's definitely not something that Bitcoin can say. I think there are some third party wallets, but like Bitcoin Core itself is just an awful piece of software. Um, I would never recommend anyone use that. So I think that's that's kind of been the focus. And also, like I talked about a little bit earlier, I think the store of value has become kind of the the major meme, the major focus on what Decred is. Um, and so I think that's kind of been a, an overarching focus on why Decred. That's a, it's a very secure store of value. And for the Monero community, um, I mean, definitely, I think somebody posted or shared a meme in a presentation about Monero that we're kind of like the the Kool-Aid man, we just kind of jump into any conversation and want to just start screaming about privacy. Like we are very, very focused on privacy as a whole, not even just in Monero, but in, in the entire technology space. So you'll definitely see that as probably the core focus in the Monero community. Um, and then outside of that, because of the privacy that has been baked into Monero, um, fungibility is a key focus in that, I mean, this core principle of money that every sound money needs the privacy that's in Monero helps enable that. So you'll hear people talk about that a lot too. Um, and then the last one, I think this is something that I'm trying to kind of change, but the focus of the community I think has been on Monero being digital cash. Um, and I definitely think that it is that, but I think a lot of people have missed the point that it can also be a store of value. Yes, it has a different monetary policy than Bitcoin and Decred and that there is that very low permanent inflation of 0.6 XMR per block for infinity, um, but it's, it's basically a negligible inflation and helps to secure the chain, even if network fees don't. And that opens up a whole lot of other protocol options like dynamic block size, um, et cetera. So I think those are definitely the focuses of the two communities. Hmm. Do you have any long-term concerns for, for DCR in the future or some holes that you see in the project? Yeah, I think for the the privacy implementation specifically, I mean, obviously this is my focus in the space. So I've been keeping a very close eye on that from the moment it was kind of teased all the way to the CSPP launch um, and now to getting close to the Decrediton release that includes privacy. I think my main fear is just that it that it is opt-in, even though so far we've gotten good at option. Um, I worry that if there's any kind of regulatory pushback, that people within Decred will just bail on the privacy implementation entirely, and it will become a, essentially a non-fungible money, um, just to make sure that we don't run across, like, run afoul of regulators. Um, I, I don't. I hopefully, 
we hopefully we won't see that happen. I think there's a lot of good stuff going on in regulation. Um, there's a recent white paper that was put out by, I think it was Tari Labs, who commissioned a paper to talk about why privacy coins shouldn't scare any regulators. They shouldn't be afraid of them. Um, and hopefully that will apply to Decred too. But I, I am a little bit worried with the focus of the community that if there is regulatory pushback, we'll just abandon the privacy implementation overall and it won't really cover too many users. Um, yeah, just a, one other one. I think the other one is just that the privacy implementation post-mix can be tricky. Um, and I had a good long conversation in, in Matrix about this, but post-mix tools are very important when using a, a chain like Decred that has amounts exposed. And um, it, it can be tricky to actually spend after the mix. So I'm hopeful that the Decred devs will continue to iterate on that and find good ways to protect people's privacy in the native wallets, and then hopefully implement something that can make sure that all wallets that interact with Decred do the same. Got it. So what are you optimistic about when it comes to DCR? What are some of the things you think it does that are special? Yeah, I mean, the the huge one is, is still this strong base of security and governance. That's allowed Decred to not only survive so far, but I think really thrive. Um, and I think you could throw the, the actual treasury funding in there too. Because even through this multi-year bear market, I mean, Decred's price hasn't done well. And yet still, they've been able to fund everything that's needed funding. Um, and everything that's been approved has been able to be funded. So I think seeing that the chain has survived and thrived through multiple years of bear market, through uh, just lots of changes and lots of kind of narrative shifts, it's encouraging to see that the community is kind of growing and iterating along with the network. Um, I think a lot of good is happening there. And and I think the chain has a very strong base of security and governance that can help it to, to grow in the future. Um, the other thing is, I, I was honestly very surprised as someone who's a huge opt-out privacy um, fan, and really I push that in every community I'm in, um, to see that the opt-in privacy features in Decred saw, to me, what is massive usage already, even though it's only available in the CLI and is kind of tied to the solo staking system. Um, that was encouraging. I mean, it's already well past any Bitcoin mixing numbers, even though Decred is a, is a tiny coin comparatively. So I think that that has been awesome to see. And I'm very hopeful that will continue. And I think we'll see it skyrocket once Decrediton has it in so that all the GUI users can access that privacy functionality. Um, yeah. And then the last one is just that the incredible user experience in Decred makes it really easy to onboard new users. I'm not afraid to, to tell someone about Decred to share with them how to use it and just tell them, hey, yeah, go install Decrediton and play around with it. Because that's honestly just a, a gorgeous, simple to use, very feature rich um, GUI that integrates, I mean, it integrates voting and proposals, um, looking at them, obviously, coin control, all the important things for the wallet. So it's lots of great software, including Politea and others that makes it easy for new users to get involved in Decred and start interacting with the chain. Got it. Well, Seth, I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts and message to potential stakeholders? Um, I think I would just say definitely keep plugging away at figuring out what narrative will drive Decred moving forward. Um, I think we're at the crossroads now. I think there's a lot of good conversations going on in the community. Um, but I would definitely urge people to not step back, not to just kind of sit and keep staking silently. Get your voice out there, get into Reddit, get onto Politea. Um, definitely make your voice heard because I think as a community, we need to find a way to to push Decred forward in non-technical ways, um, whether that's narrative change, whether that's uh, kind of a grassroots marketing focus. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means yet. That's something I'm wrestling with and trying to figure out because um, differentiation is very hard in this space. But I think that I would definitely urge people to um, just to be vocal in, in more than just interacting with the chain, but in all of the platforms that you're able to to talk about Decred, make sure that you're vocal, make sure that you're trying to kind of come up with ideas and, and iterate on how Decred can pitch itself. Got it. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show, Seth. Yeah, thank you. It's been great. <laughs>